first and foremost, first and foremost, NASA's Perseverance Mars rover. Of course, I it has its own Twitter feed because it it tweets out things. It's uh, actually right up on top. These are actually the two, the first photo taken when it landed, and then the wow. second the second photo taken. Uh, people, of course, are already complaining that it's not color. Like what? Dude, these it's are on Mars. Well, these are not the 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 professional camera those cameras there are for navigation so they're just uh, like telemetry so it knows where it's going if there's something in its way it's just part of its you know you know navigation sensor array essentially so that people are already complaining about it but it's it's kind of funny that they they would love they really do go there with it but and then uh here's this is what i i found this really cool this is um basically an overview of the entire solar system all right it's kind of hard to uh see the grandness of this entire website but it's fantastic all right so you can see our solar system and you can see here is mars I'm trying to zoom in a little bit it's kind of hard to get like uh -oh. the exact spot so this is uh well it's actually not accurate anymore because as you see on the bottom perseverance mars landing it's completed it was completed as of it was like 335, I believe, or 340, but because of there's a delay, the speed of light, we can only get data so long. We had to wait a little bit. So we got confirmation at around 355 that everything was successful and everything meaning the the landing, um, the it it has it it basically had its own um drop helicopter thing, rocket landing piece. Let me see if I if I've got that. Here's uh this is just the website. I'm going to skip ahead here. Th oh, this is fantastic. All right. So this is Everyday Af Astronaut. If you don't know Everyday Astronaut, you definitely should. This guy is awesome. I would love to have him on my show. But he does a great job of basically summing up everything from start to finish. So the Atlas V rocket is actually what propelled the Mars. It, it was called the Mars 2020, but it's the Perseverance package, essentially, to drop it off. And uh, this was, it took off July 30th, 2020. So that was quite some time ago. And it's uh, it's been traveling for a while and it just landed today. And then, uh, of course, it's got that that uh, that first picture taken when it landed on Mars. And then the Atlas V launch, which is what took it off. But this is where, well, this is the phase timeline. We got the uh, cruise stage separated and burned up in the Martian atmosphere. It was kind of cool. If you were watching it live, they actually had a... Um, I don't know, like a CGI version, so you can kind of see what it what it looked like. It's kind of cool. And then, of course, uh, the entry and all that good stuff. But I want to see. Here we go. What did the Perseverance take to Mars? This is uh, this is where it gets really fun. All right, we got a a, a mass cam Z. It's the the image the Martian surface in high definition video, high resolution panoramas, and in 3D. So you'll be able to put on a VR headset and stand on the surface of Mars no with kidding. actual, you know, like a professional grade 3D camera that is going to be able to like mimic what it's seeing. So I'm pretty excited about that. That is the coolest thing that's ever happened. Right? Truly. I and love stuff like this. It gives you hope. It gives you hope for humanity. True. That's true. It actually doesn't say here, but they ha actually, it's going to include a microphone. So it's going to be recording the sounds of Mars. So you're actually going to wow. be able to put a VR headset on and really feel like you're standing on Mars because you're going to hear the way the wind sounds, the way things are. Who knows what it's going to sound like? What if we hear some distant whale call? Wouldn't that be trippy? That would be amazing. <laughs> I, I agree. It would be trippy. But there is some cool things that I want to bring out. And this is uh, another – this is from the uh, Atlantic Journal. Um, and it, it has a nice list of cool things that I want to talk about that essentially what the what it's going to do. So looking for signs of light. If everything goes, uh, this is this was written before obviously it landed, so there's a little bit. Uh, so if everything goes to plan, which it did, Perseverance will touch down Thursday in J Zero Crater, which was once an ancient seabed. So it was actually um, there was used to be water there. Good place to uh, search for least signs of life. And that's what it's uh, it's going to be doing there. Every previous min mission has seen in one way or another that Mars was once habitable, says Katie Stack Morgan, a geologist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and deputy project, project scientist of the overall mission known as Mars 2020. 
But with perseverance, we are taking the next step, looking for signs of life in the ancient rock record. To do this, scientists on Earth will peer through Perseverance's camera eyes, scouring Jezero for rocks that contain patterns, textures, and the distribution of chemicals that can only be explained by biological activity. The rover will mostly hunt for strom stromatolites, stromatolites, there, I think that, that would be it, stromatolites, rock structures that look similar to those created by microbial mats on Earth billions of years ago but it will seek out other indicators of past life as well, including one ones that could be unique to Mars. And this is actually a shot of it landing. So this was part of the landing procedure because this perseverance weighs a ton. Like, no joke. I, I think more than a ton. I don't know exactly the weight of it, but actually, let's see. I bet it, it lists it here on uh, everyday... Uh, every day astronauts webpage. I don't know if it lists it here how much it weighs. Um, I don't know. I can't find it, but I, this thing weighs a lot. So they couldn't just drop it, you know. So they actually had to basically slowly lower it to the ground with this this guy. Wow. I wonder if he had a name because he did a he good service too. A name, right? I kind of. You, know you know, if he doesn't have a, a name, you know what that reminds me of, Adam? What? When what? Chewie did not get a medal. In the very first Star Wars movie, at the end, Chewie did not get a medal, and oh, yeah. and Luke and Han got a medal, and I was very offended by that because Chewie performed a service as well, and he did not get a medal until the end of the last Star Wars movie, which that was the only redeeming part of that movie was that Chewie got his medal at the end. Huh. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. He never got his medal. He did, well, well, he did it eventually. Very end eventually. Of the, it, it, Wait, it took years. Of the new series? Yeah, of like the new movies that came out that sucked. Mostly. Right, right. Yeah, at the very yeah, end, they, he they got really his medal. They, well, they good, good, good for Chewie, I guess. I don't even like Star Wars, and I didn't think they were good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's see. It's all. Well, our search is firmly based on what we see in early Earth rock record, but we will also open our minds to what signs of life might look like on another planet. That's true because um, the the gravity on Mars, since Mars is significantly smaller, it's all it's about 30 percent uh gravity so if you weigh a hundred if you weigh 100 pounds on earth you'll only weigh 30 i think like 36 pounds on mars so you're supremely lighter it's a significantly different environment so like if life did exist there it would have it would look a lot different because you know we're used to 1g life on this planet is at 1g so um it's interesting so that's kind of what they're referring to there because it, it will be different but if there is life there or was life there, I mean, I'm saying if because who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll find maybe. life. I, I don't know. I don't know, right? All right. So, collecting samples, though Perseverance is tasked with finding evidence of past life on Mars, it does not have the cap uh, capability to prove that life actually existed. Instead, the rover will use a powerful drill at the end of a, its hinged arm to bore into promising rocks and collect core samples, each about the size of a marker pen. Those samples will be sealed inside 43 metal tubes in the rover's belly. Perseverance will set aside samples it collects for retrieval by a fetch rover launching in 2026. Under an elaborate plan still being worked out by NASA and the European Space Agency, the geologic treasure would arrive on Earth in the early 2030s. Scientists contend it's o the only way to ascertain whether life flourished on a wet, watery Mars Three billion to four billion years ago, NASA's science chief, uh, science mission chief Thomas Zerbuchin, considered it one of the hardest things do ever done by humanity, and certainly in space science. This is really a, a, a big moment in our advancement towards under understanding life, potential life. You know, it, we're we're moving into a, an incredible future. So. It's so impressive, and it just shows you what can happen when people actually focus on being productive with their lives instead of calling everyone a racist. We're going to come back to that. <laughs> because I know it's on your mind, but and I 100% agree with you. No, 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 but for real, like, do you think that they have critical race theory training? And, and like, no, of course they don't. It would distract from all of this stuff. It would make it impossible. <laughs> <laughs> no lies detected. All right, so to make the claim that you have found signs of life on another planet requires 
of the full capability of the terrestrial science community, says Matt Wallace, Perseverance Deputy Project Manager at JPL. We Scott can Wellman take... in the chat. Sorry, Scott Wellman in the chat says critical space theory. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we can take maybe 100 pounds of instruments with us on the rover in a single laboratory on Earth. You can have a ton of equipment. Right. Now, this is actually a really cool thing that they've got. It's, it's, it's something called MOXIE making oxygen so perseverance will also test new technologies that could be used to support eventual crewed missions to mars these include an instrument the size of a small microwave oven that's designed to make oxygen from the abundant carbon dioxide in the martian atmosphere the mars oxygen in situ, uh, in situ resource utilization experiment or moxie relies on a process called electrolysis that uses an electrical charge to drive a chemical reaction. Generating oxygen on Mars is a necessary it is necessary because it would be pract impractical for a crew to bring it from Earth, said Assad Abu Baker, a systems engineer and member of the science team for Moxie at JPL. If Moxie works as expected, it will generate six to ten grams of oxygen an hour. That's a small fraction of the 30 to 40 grams of oxygen per hour that NASA's budget uh, budgets for each astronaut aboard the International Space Station. But Abu, uh, Abu Baker said the technology is fairly easy to scale up. Even more important, an instrument like MOXIE will likely be used to create the 30,000 kilograms of oxygen necessary to make the liquid propellant that would rocket future human explorers off Mars when they're ready to return to Earth. We know how to land hundreds of kilograms of the stuff on Mars. We don't know how to land 30,000 kilograms of stuff on... Wait. We, oh, we know how to land hundreds of kilograms of stuff. We don't know how to land 30,000 kilograms of stuff on Mars. <laughs> right. Because it, it's hard enough landing a rover that's a ton, you know, let alone 30,000 kilograms of stuff. So... And now this is one of my favorite things. I really am excited to see if this, I, I don't know if this has uh, actually been um, tested. I was waiting on the live stream to see if it was going to work, but this is the helicopter. It's called Ingenuity. Uh, the Mars 2020 mission also include a four pound helicopter nicknamed Ingenuity that could be the first vehicle to fly on Mars. If wow. it works, future iterations could be used to create higher resolution maps of the Martian surface and explore areas not suited for wheeled rovers. Because the Martian atmosphere is so thin, about 1% the des uh, density of Earth's atmosphere at its surface, scientists were not sure that flying on Mars was possible. From the And remember that the weight difference, so we're used to things flying at 1G, you know, to so the weight and being able to lift, so they had to r really create almost a new type of flying helicopter to be able to fly through the atmosphere of Mars and also deal with the lighter um, weight ratios. Uh, anyway, from the beginning, there was a natural skepticism, says Mimi Ung, an engineer and project manager for Ingenuity at JPL. The question at first wasn't how, but if. Ung and her team determined that it is possible to fly in the thin Martian air if you have strong blades that can spin incredibly fast. So on Mars, Ingenuity's blades will make 2,400 revolutions per minute. The next challenge was designing a vehicle that had all the necessary sensors, computers, and heaters to function on Mars, yet was still light enough to become airborne. Just to get where we are now is already a significant milestone, Ung said. After landing on Mars, Perseverance, well, now that it's landed on Mars, Perseverance will place Ingenuity on the surface, then drive to a safe distance. The helicopter will have 30 Martian days or souls to perform its experiments, including five planned test flights. The first flight will be modest, with the helicopter rising 10 feet, flying about 3 feet horizontally, then landing where it started. If everything goes well, subsequent flights will last longer with the fifth one continuing for up to 90 seconds. We see this as a, uh, as a pathfinder that will pave the way for future missions, Ung said. It will be the basis for building much larger vehicles capable of much longer flights. Okay, just that alone, I mean, I am so hyped on that. Now, they didn't actually add that that uh, Ingenuity rotary a hel mini helicopter, I guess, has a high-detailed color camera 
So it's really? going to be, yeah, it's going to be taking really nice, clean, colored images from the sky of Mars. So I'm very excited about that. That's so cool. I just saw a video from Mars. It was before all this um, the other day that was taken at night that showed mm -hmm. what the, the night sky at, on Mars looked like. And it was just like, it was so ridiculous and so awe-inspiring. I just love this stuff so oh, much. The universe I, is so big. I didn't big. see that. Yeah, oh, it is. Yeah, I tweeted it out. It's 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 so incredible. And it's so like, you know, why one of the reasons I like thinking about the alien stuff and why things like Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind is so, you know, interesting to me is because that puts life in an entirely different perspective. Yeah. When you see people and they talk about these experiences they've had connecting with I mean, whether or not you believe it, but they they certainly believe it with with beings that are not from here. That, like, they see life in a totally different way. And when you see life like that, it's like all of the problems that we think are problems that we spend all our time complaining about on the internet, it makes them seem not so big, doesn't it? Absolutely. And it makes me think of this post. I actually just found it real quick. Let's pop this back up. Each of us is a tiny being permitted to ride on the outermost skin of one of the smallest planets for a few dozen trips around the local star Carl Sagan we wow. and and I actually I said more people to need to face this fact because life is fleeting it is short we you know we're only here for so long you know it's that I mean people ask like how is it e easy to be optimistic it's like I'm, I'm I recognize that I'm alive that I'm I'm here I'm 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 coherent I'm talking to you I'm and I know that I'm sitting on a thin skin of a planet flying through space right now at like 60,000 kilometers a second. Some crazy number like that. I don't know. Maybe that's a little off, but it's it's similar. Like we're moving through space. The sun is flying through space and we're spiraling around it in, in this beautiful dance through this empty space called the universe. And it's it, you know, it's incredible to think about it. And yeah. it's a little sad on how many people say space is fake. Do you get, do you see this? Oh my ever? gosh, it drives me crazy. It's like, what are you doing? What? No, that's not right. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you doing? I know that's the only thing I could think of. <laughs> Right. No, I mean, life is awesome. Like, there's so many, like, even even when there's crap going on and nonsense, like, yep. never let that stuff get you down. This is why I don't, listen, like, I'm very close to, like, blackpilling politically. Not necess not in terms of life, but in terms of, like, seeing possibility politically. Yeah. But even if you, even if you blackpill politically, don't blackpill on life, man. There's always, like, live it to its fullest. There's so much that every one of us can do and experience, and it's it's nothing but possibilities. And I think I, it makes me so sad when people hold themselves back from yeah. living the life that they want to over just nonsense. It's so True unnecessary. That. Yep, even even chats going, but but it is fake. Like, bah, 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 bah. Mm. Look at this. This one, uh, this is my last last part of it. Theorist. I just want to say, shout out to the Onion for actually putting something out that made me laugh. <laughs> Curiosity, <laughs> Curiosity rover, by the way, it was the previous rover we put on uh, Mars, frantically driving around Mars to make it look like it's been busy before the new spacecraft arrives. <laughs> and then, of, of course, Bernie. they had to put, they put a Bernie on it and... Uh, <laughs> They just got to do it. Uh, it's interesting because the Perseverance rover is is almost identical in the the shell of the Curiosity rover. It just has a lot more um, updated equipment. It's got a nuclear reactor um, power source instead of the Curiosity rover. So it's it's definitely a, an incredible upgrade. So it's really exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing if that helicopter works, the Ingenuity. And uh, shout out to the entire team. You guys did a fantastic job of not only landing something on Mars, but propelling something off of Earth, shooting it through space in a trajectory that we knew. Because we didn't just go to Mars. They shot it to where they knew Mars was going to be, and they connected. And that, so I mean, it's just, man, humans are amazing. And, humans uh, are so creative. There's so much potential that we haven't unlocked yet. It's insane.